Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm standing outside the only house in Britain which was later converted into a railway station. Of course, there's many railway stations which have been converted into houses, even without the railway actually having to close. But this building here was a Georgian house. It was later built, bought by the railway, converted into a railway station. The railway has since closed in its now offices. We're going to go to the junction station and we're going to explore that railway line back to here. Here we are, West Drayton. This was the junction station for that railway. The line we're going to explore in today's video is the old Staines West Railway. Now this is the Great Western Main Line. That way is looking towards Bristol and that way is looking towards London. Now this isn't the original site of West Drayton Station. It, when it opened in 1838 it was somewhere else. It was recited here when they built the line down to Staines West. And then later on, I think it was, so it was 1884, the sta this station opened on this site along with the Staines West Branch. It was in 1856 they added the Uxbridge Branch, so from here there was a bay platform. Now, as you can see there still is a bay platform. I think some Elizabeth Line trains do stop here but the majority of them going to Abbey Wood would stop over there. But the line we're going to explore, the first part of the line is still in use. You get freight trains going down to Colnebrook and Forney Mill and that is you'll get them coming out of here. And if you have a look here, you can see they've actually skewered the track slightly. So the old bay platform, look, that's the line of the old bay platform, looking a little bit of a mess actually at the moment, all this bad layer and everything, but to where I'm stood, this would have been, I'd have been on the track. And the passenger trains stopped running down here, I think it was in 1965. But they, apart from the odd rail tour, there was one day back in 2014 where passenger trains returned. Have a look at this picture. One fifty oh oh two was working a train down the branch, Great Western, just for one weekend. They ran trains up and down there, just for people like me, track bashers, to get to do that bit of line. So I'm quite pleased to say I have actually caught a train here and gone down towards Staines West. Now, Staines, of course, is in that direction. The line, as you can see, the bay platform's on the north side of the line. So what happened up there? The line turns and it goes down and burrows under the Great Western Main Line. And before it burrowed under, there'd have been the junction with the Uxbridge branch. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to find my way out of the station. I'm going to drive to Colnebrook. So as I said, the next, the first part of the line is still in use for goods train. So we can't really walk that part of the line. But the more interesting part of the line is further down. So we're going to have a bit of a walk. Part of the line has been covered over by the M25. So that's going to be a bit difficult. But that's why we're going to use my car to do a couple of parts of the old Staines West Line. But we're going to go and explore this line thoroughly right now. So just outside West Drayton Station, I found my larder. Maybe one of the last times to take it to West Drayton because at the time of filming, ULES hasn't yet been implemented, but very soon it may well be, and I may not be able to take my car into London. But anyway, I'm not going to get all political. The railway line still does run just along there. There's a big incinerator there, which you probably have seen from the M25. You may also be able to hear planes taking off from Heathrow, and that's kind of why the line still survives. But about there somewhere was Colnebrook Estate Halt. Now, this was the shortest lived halt on the railway. It opened as late as 1961, and the line closed in 1965. There probably wasn't many people really living around here, but it was to serve people who worked in these factories. So for four years, they could commute to these factories by train. I'm going to jump into Larder now. We're going to go to Colnebrook Village and we'll go and find Colnebrook Station. So I'm now on the Bath Road. That way is looking towards London and that way of course is looking towards Bath. Now as for Colnebrook Station we're nearly there. It's just along here. There was actually a level crossing here once. And this building here was the station master's house. Now as you can see there's no level crossing. Trains don't go beyond this road. But if you want to know how far trains do go, there's your answer. I'm quite pleased to see this Class 66 sitting here. So this might have brought down the train. Um, I can just see, look, you can just see some tankers. So this is as far as trains go, where this Class 66 is parked. So the station would have been here, um, was it, well, more down there, the actual platforms of station would have been. So it opened with the line in 1884. It closed 
in I think March 1965 but they say it hung on for goods for another 10 months into 1966 I suppose that's as a station to pick up goods but as you can see hasn't actually closed yet for freight trains they still go to here you can quite clearly see the buffers are just there so they no longer go across the road this building here though this is a nice survivor this is the station master's house so that survives I think the track would have been slightly more over here because there used to be a signal box around here somewhere so there was a signal box here and the railway line if you look going by this you can see see these old level crossing um lights i think the track would have been more where i'm standing would have gone across and down down there let's just have a look at the station master's house so here is the main survivor look it actually says station cottage so the station master's house survives curiously although it was colnbrook station and look it's still known as colnbrook rail terminal technically this is poil colnbrook is down there the village of colnbrook is down there but i think right now we're in poil we're going to go across the road now and what we'll do we'll leave the station behind so we'll just have another look at the level crossing we're going to go down down there because that's a public footpath following the route of the railway so one final look at the station complete with class 66 and we're going to follow off down that footpath and find the next station so i've now come a couple of hundred yards down the railway the footpath has moved to this side of the old railway formation there's a very shallow embankment here we're going to now head along here it's a bit of a not the nicest of places look there's all that razor wire down there on the ground and we're just walking past this bit of palisade fence but i've seen quite a few people walking down here so it's clearly used footpath but we get to here how's this there's a bridge this bridge takes us over the poil channel so this is there's there's all sorts of rivers around here colm brook is a river there's river colm and then there's the colm brook the two split and then they go their own courses and join the thames this is as i said the poil channel but this comes off the raysbury river and runs from the Raysbury River into the Colne Brook. So it's effectively a river that doesn't have a source that comes out of the ground. It's a river that comes off another river. A bit like railways, really. You know, not all railways are branch lines end to end. You get ones, you know, like, say, Aylesbury to Princess Risborough. It's a bit like a branch line, but it's got a short junction station that it's in. So this is the Boyle Channel. And we appear to be on the original railway bridge. I'm going to follow this footpath up here and we're going to go and find the next station. It's not too far, just up here. Well, there's going to be anything left of it, I don't know. We're going to go and find out. I'm following the old railway line still. I'm actually on the track bed. The footpath we're on turned off into this industrial estate just over there. So I haven't seen anyone. I think all the people I saw using the footpath were people who worked there. So it's, it's quite lonely now. It really is yeah, just me and the sound of aircraft and the sound of factories. I can also smell a burger bar somewhere which is making me quite hungry. I think somewhere around here, this is where Poyle Estate Holt would have been. Now Poyle Estate Holt, a bit like Colnbrook Estate Holt, was one of those short-lived ones, but not quite as short-lived as Colnbrook Estate Holt. It opened in 1954 and fairly obviously it was for the workers of these factories. So they would have come here by train. So again, I don't think anyone actually lived here that would have used it, but they'd have come by train in the latter years, it'd have been a diesel, a class 121 probably, or a 122 single rail unit, which I do remember on the Prince Richard Trailsby branch. Uh, remember going up and down on them. So they used, because they finished in 2017. So it'd have been those units running up and down here. And somewhere around here, there'd just been a little hole, just a platform, a little concrete platform hole. I can just see down there, there's like a concrete boulder, whether that's anything to do with the hole. I can't see anything. I've been looking around, I can't see any posts or just no evidence at all not even you know a bit of fence post that there was a halt here but i'm fairly sure right now i'm standing on the site of poyle estate halt i'm going to follow this lonely path down there you can see here you can see the embankment that you know so it's a shallow embankment and let's go and find the next halt or where the next halt was so after finding poyle estate halt the path got rather overgrown so i walked back to my larder and I've parked here. We're now at the other side of the very vast Poyle Industrial Estate. Now, the next hole we're going to look for was called Poyle for Stanwell Moor. Now, if you look up here, you can see it's quite busy. The motorway's near here as well. The railway would have gone across 
just about um, up there where those vehicles are waiting at the traffic lights but this halt would have been just down here so we're going to go down this um, not particularly expiring, um, inspiring looking footpath and um, we're going to walk just down here remains of a motorbike so really um, of all the nice places I've been I wouldn't say this is one of the best I've been but it's going to get better once we get to the, the Staines Moor part of the railway so this would have all been Stanwell Moor this area here and you can see it's, there's not a lot here now but you can actually follow this path all the way through to Staines so if you ever do want to walk the old railway you could get a bus the buses from Slough to Hounslow stop on the um, A4 outside the old Colnebrook station if you could walk all through that industrial state it would be a bit boring and you can walk down here <laughs> that is where the halt would have been so the railway line would have come across here somewhere none of this embankment would have been here this is all modern for the roads for a big junction with Heathrow Airport on the M25 so the halt would have been there opened in 1927 so again a later addition to the line a bit earlier than the last two halts which you know opened in one of them as late as 1961 and another one in the 50s opened in 1927 to serve a few farm houses there was still a few factories in, in that time even that long ago there was an explosive factory in the area so people you know you'd have kind of mixture of commuters and people just you know who lived on the farms trying to get up to london or maybe down to staines i'm gonna walk i might just have a look around there just to see where the path goes but then i'm gonna go back to my larder we'll drive to staines we'll find the final two halts on this old railway Parked my car on the edge of Staines and I'm now out on Staines Moor, a very vast and um, I would say quiet area, but you can hear the sound of the motorway and the aircraft, but there's no one about. And here's the River Colne. The railway though we're looking for runs roughly over the other side. So I'm effectively doing a circular walk to get to the railway. So I'm gonna now go over the River Colne. The railway's effectively being cut in two by the M25. So we were, outside the m25 now we're inside the m25 so you can walk all the way there is a path but it wouldn't be along the old alignment so my plan is to make my way continuing in that direction across stains moor and we'll eventually rejoin the old railway line just um, a tip if you're thinking of doing this walk it's the height of the summer so as you can see, it's very wet. Look, you can't even see my feet. They've disappeared into the marsh. So um, if you are thinking of coming this way, I suggest where well is, certainly if you're not doing it summer. We get to here, look, there is a boardwalk. So that's good, but we could have done with a boardwalk all the way across the moor. So I'm going to continue up that way. In the distance over there, that's one of the reservoirs. So the railway line would have come across there. The M25 is just there. You probably can hear it. I'm hoping I'll follow the railway line back across that way into Staines and being on an embankment, it should be not quite as wet as this. Well, I've now crossed Staines Moor. It really feels like um, just so sort of archaic having to walk across this moor and getting your feet wet and everything. But I've got to here. And I think in this load of bushes, I should find the old railway line. So the public footpath continues along here. It was interesting, I was looking on some old maps. And an old map from 1911, it shows this footpath existing. And just south of here is a halt called Yavani Halt. We get to here, now look. The Palisade fence, if it's ever useful for once, the fact that it's going up and down, it quite clearly emphasises the shallow embankment which has been a feature of this railway so we're back on the railway again and um, look at this it almost makes it the palisade fencing a bit pointless the fact there's a style in the middle of it but we get to here so that is looking towards West Drayton I'm just going to go down here we, we will go down there because I think that halts down there I just want to show you um, a couple of other things over here so there appears to be another public footpath going that way a very overgrown looking public footpath but if we go through here, through this kissing gate, we come out to here and we come to this path here. Now this is a fairly substantial looking path. When I was at the last halt where I said, you know, you could continue along. If you continued along, 
you'd have come to here. And, it, and it'd probably take me about the same amount of time if I walked along here. It's a good mile along there, and you can continue along the path that way if you wanted a less um, energetic way back. Right, I'm going to go. Let's go on to the railway's formation and uh, we will attempt to see if there's anything left of the Avani Holt. Whether there is or not, I don't know at this, at this stage. Um, sorry about that. I literally just got attacked by, by this. I've probably now got... Um, I've got a fawn in my hand. I'll pull it out when I finish recording this take. Anyway, let's go along the old road. Look, there's a sign actually, a board. It says, oh, this style, I think needs mending. Uh, an old railway for nature's commuters. So there's a bit of interpretation. We we'll go and find out what's down there. Well, the footpath along the railway was a bit too overgrown to walk along. So I'm walking along a not quite so overgrown, but still pretty overgrown footpath along beside the old railway. Um, I'm literally getting caught up in brambles just about every other step I make. We're looking for the site of Yovani Holt. Now this is another strange one. Like what seems to be the common theme, didn't open with the line, but it opened well. It first appeared in 1887, didn't appear in the time until 1892. Now I've just noticed these two concrete bollards here and uh, quite conveniently there's a hole in the fence. So if we go through here, you can see the shallow embankment. I think this hole must have been around here somewhere. And there's another another piece of um, concrete there. So the hole must have been here. Now it's a bit of an unusual one, this hole. As I said, didn't open with the line, is the common theme. Wasn't really used by anyone who worked here or by anyone who lived here, because there's not much around here. There still isn't much around here, apart from the motorway. It was used by people going shooting. They closed the rifle range at Wimbledon, and they opened one out here. I think at one point it might have been known as, as Runnymede Rifle Range up from looking on an old map. So, but it was officially called Giovanni Holt. And then it closed in 1962. So it actually closed three years before the line closed. I'm going to continue along. I hope I can continue along here. If not, I'll have to go back and walk along the other path which follows the motorway. And um, hopefully we'll eventually come to the edge of Staines once again. Well, I've now found my way back onto the old railway track bed. That footpath did continue, but looking very overgrown. But it appears someone's been along with a strimmer and strimmed the old railway track bed. So I've been able to walk along here. Now, we've been gradually climbing. We were, you know, on a very shallow embankment. Look, we're at the height of a bridge now above the grounds. And the reason for that is somewhere up here, it would have had to cross the Windsor line. So it needed to go up. Oh, they obviously didn't want a flat crossing so it's climbed up we will continue down there towards stains but let's go down here first just because we can and we'll have a look at the one piece of architecture that we've come across so far we have we've been over you know the bridge earlier on over the river but we've not seen any sort of substantial brick brick bridges so i thought it'd be nice to come down here and see that now we get to down here and there we are look there's there's the bridge just there. So what I'm going to do, this is obviously a public footpath, um, but I'm going to go back up those steps and follow the track bridge. I'm just about 50 yards on from that bridge and uh, we're getting to the point where it crosses the Windsor Line. The Windsor Line is only just there. It's very overgrown, so I'm not going to go right up to where it crossed it, but we'll see if we can see it from somewhere else. There's a bit of a path going off down there. If I was to follow that, that would take me back to where I started. So I'm going to go back to that railway bridge and um, follow my way out that way. Um, I'll explain why soon. Somewhere around here there was a link finally with the two lines. So I'll use this opportunity to explain about that. The two lines were originally separate because this was the Great Western one and then there was obviously the other one um, in Staines. The two lines weren't ever going to connect but in 1942 a spur was put in about here to connect with the Windsor branch and then once this line became severed, another spur was put in on the other side, I think as late as 1981, to serve an oil depot. But what we'll do, we'll look at where that other spur was with the Windsor line. I've got an idea where that'll be when we get closer. So I'm now heading back towards West Drayton, but that bridge is just here. So I'm going to go down underneath the bridge and follow the footpath around that way.
I'm now back on the road. I followed that footpath which went under the railway bridge to the end. It took me over the Windsor Line and out onto this road here. Now I've come to here and um, there's this nicely mowed flood defence bank and there's, since I can't walk along here, so I thought I was just going to go and have a look along here. So you can see another one of the river channels and just up there the Windsor Line goes over a bridge over this river. What perhaps I'll do, although the Windsor Line seems to be featuring a bit in today's video, naturally because we're crossing it, I've got my Branch Line Britain series. One day I shall make a Branch Line Britain video on the Windsor Line and then we can look at you know some of the, the features of the Windsor Line. So the Windsor Line has got some interesting features as well and we can further look into the relationship of the two railway lines. Um, I'm surprised really you can just walk along here but as I said didn't say you couldn't. I think we're probably not going to get any further than beyond the the bridge where the Windsor Line goes over. It, one, the reason I want to take you down here is because it was around here where the line we're exploring, the Staines West Branch, would have crossed the Windsor Line on a bridge. As I mentioned, we had climbed up quite high, nicely demonstrated by the bridge. Ah, oh, and here we go. In fact, if you look through there, that, there's a bridge abutment in those trees about where my finger is. There'd have been a bridge, a skew bridge, in a similar way to how the Windsor Line goes over a skew bridge over the river. The Staines West Branch would have gone on a skew bridge over there. And see where that tree is there? The abutment is there. I can see it in the tread and how well the camera's picking it out. If we stand here, you may just be able to see there's a little bit of masonry brickwork. So once you could have stood here and watched trains on two different regions in, well, this line was electrified fairly early on, so you'd have probably had early EMUs and maybe a Great Western 1400 and, um, and an auto trailer crossing. And then later on, you'd have had the later EMUs and as I mentioned earlier, possibly one, two, one bubble cars, maybe even early days, the Great Western rail cars. So. This would have been quite an interesting place to see trains of two different regions. I'm going to walk back down there and we're going to go and head towards Staines West Station. Having walked along the road, I've now come up this track and I'm onto a quite an interesting bridge. Well, the bridge itself isn't that interesting. What I mean is it goes over quite a few different things. So this is the Staines West Branch down there. Not much to see, really. Over there's another watercourse. Then you've got, I think, the Raysbury River. You can see it better on this side. The railway line to Windsor. Now, it was along this section that possibly one day, it probably won't happen now, but it was talked about a few years ago, they could build a line to Heathrow Airport. So the Staines West Branch at this point would have gone along there, gone up a bit of a ramp and over the Windsor line. Um, that road there wouldn't have been here. There's a main Staines bypass road, so that's a fairly modern addition. As for the Windsor line, I think what we'll do, if we do a Branch Line Britain episode of that in the future, we can discuss various um, points on the Windsor line because like, there was a, a triangle further up where it joined the main line. So I don't think we'll put that in today's video. Is there water? Yeah, so that, I think I think that's the Raysbury River down there. Of course, that's the Windsor line. So you've basically got, you had railway, river, railway. And that section was in use into the 80s for oil trains. This is quite a good place to go blackberrying up here. We're now going to cross the Windsor line. There was also, again, this is for when I do a Branch Line Britain video on the Windsor line, but um, down there, there used to be a station called Staines High Street. That was fairly short-lived, but we'll look at the site of that when we do the Windsor Line. I'm going to, what I'm going to do, I'm going to follow a footpath around there, and there should be a foot crossing about where that light is, and then when we get to there, Staines West Station was just, just over there, so we're, we're nearly back to where we started. Here we are, I've just come across the Windsor line. I don't like to hang around on railways too much, but the bridge we were on is just there a moment ago, so 
I've walked around there, come across here. Now, what I wanted to show you here was about here, well, exactly here was the site of the junction that they later put in. If you look on the ground, you can see rails here. This section of rail has been left in. There have been a set of points there, and you'd have had track coming off here to join the Staines restaurant. So we go down here, we come down to the river. Now, let's see what we can see, whether there was a bridge. And I hope there still is a bridge, because I need to obviously get to the other side of the river. So the footpath runs parallel to the railway and the river down there. Let's just go down to the river itself. And uh, somewhere there must have been a bridge, but the railway would have ran into Staines West, and Staines West Station would have been over there behind those new houses. Let's go and find it. So I'm now on the other side of the Raysbury River, and we're nearly at the end of the line. So the railway line would have run approximately across here. And that building there, that is the old Staines West Station. So let's go and have a closer look. So as I said at the beginning, it is unique as far as I'm concerned, because I'm pretty sure there are no other houses which have been bought by a railway and converted into a railway station. If you know of any, please do comment and tell me. I'll be very interested to hear. There's certainly a lot the other way around. The stations that used to be stations have been converted into a house, even if the railway is still open. You quite often get that on rural lines that the old station is now a house. But the other way around, as in this case, I think is unique. The railway would have come literally across here. And there's the buffers. Although that wasn't quite the end of the line. It would have been slightly further up there. But they put a set of buffers in just to remind people that this was a railway station which I think is, is quite nice. As you can see though they have built completely on this section of railway so this will never open again. As I said there's a chance that the section on Staines Moor might reopen in part to serve Heathrow Airport but um, as for this, this isn't going to reopen. You know some of them there's always a possibility but this one, this, this is not going to reopen so that isn't going to become a station again in its life it's it's nice it's so old so really it must be the oldest railway station in britain look it does say old station muse really it should be old house old station muse but anyway you know what I mean. i'm sure when i last came along here somewhere it did say stains west up there it doesn't seem to say that anymore let's go around the front of the um of the house that became a station which i think it's now offices, so it's, it's its third career. Or it may well have been flats in between them. It actually says to let, no offices and parking. It'd be funny just to let it and um, build a miniature railway out of here just so it becomes a station once again, but I don't think that's gonna happen. We're gonna continue round to the front now. So this is the front of Staines West Station. And look at that. It does say again, I can just see on the front, it does say the old station so really we are finishing right now by the oldest railway station in britain but it's only the oldest railway station in britain because it wasn't built as a railway station so it's originally a jordan house so hope you enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching please do feel free to like subscribe share and comment and from staines west station that was originally not a station and now isn't a station again thank you very much goodbye